This is a short video on uterine rupture. I'll briefly talk about the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of uterine rupture. As in all of these flowcharts, each of the boxes is color-coded according to this legend up here in the top right. And I'll be clearing all the boxes and talking through them one by one as we repopulate the flowchart. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, uterine rupture is defined as a tear in the muscular wall of the uterus. And there are a lot of things that predispose you to getting this tear in the muscular wall of the uterus. And it can be pretty catastrophic, so it's worth knowing the etiologies and the risk factors for this. First, a uterine rupture is most likely to happen where you've had a uterine scar. So if the uterine scar is there, that point in the uterus is weaker than the surrounding uterus muscle. Now, why would you get a uterine scar? It's usually in the case of a prior cesarean delivery or a prior myomectomy. Now, a prior myomectomy is a procedure that you have where you cut away a part of the uterine muscle. It's normally done for fibroids, which can be these large, painful growths on the uterus. So if the mom has had fibroids in the past, she might have had a myomectomy for them, leaving a uterine scar and predisposing her to having uterine rupture. This can also happen uh, after a prior cesarean delivery as well. In addition, what predisposes you to having rupture of the uterus muscle is high pressure in the uterus, so uterine distension. Now, there are a few reasons that this can happen. It can happen during pregnancy, of course, specifically if baby is big. So fetal macrosomia can predispose you to uterine distension. And I've colored this with the biochemical metabolic factor because a common cause of fetal macrosomia is gestational diabetes. In addition, having a post-term pregnancy or a pregnancy that lasts longer than 40 weeks can cause increased uterine distension. This of course happens because baby continues to grow throughout those extra weeks and that leads to big baby. So post-term pregnancy predisposes you as well. Multiple gestations for the same reason, increased pressure in the uterus if you have twins or triplets as opposed to having a single baby in there, and fetal malpresentation. So if baby isn't head down, if baby isn't in the normal position, this can lead to a delay in labor progression. And a delay in labor progression can mean increased pressure in the uterus as you continue to contract um, as labor is delayed. So those all increase uterine pressure during pregnancy. You can also have increased, much higher increases in uterine pressure during labor, um, during the contractions of labor. And this can be worsened by induction of labor if you're using oxytocin to push uh, the baby out to increase the force of contractions, and also in the cases of oxytocin overdose. So those are both medical and iatrogenic causes of increased pressure in the uterus that can cause uterine rupture. Now there's some other general risk factors. Advanced maternal age, usually defined as maternal age of over 35 years, can predispose you. A short interdelivery interval, defined as a period of less than or equal to 16 months between babies, between delivery of babies, and a history of spontaneous abortion. All of those also predispose you to uterine rupture. There's also the case of trauma, which is more rare, but can be very serious. So if mom is in some, in some sort of trauma that damages the uterus, that can predispose the uterus to breaking, and you can have uterine rupture that way. This can happen, for instance, after a motor vehicle accident or iatrogenic damage to the uterus. For instance, if mom is having a different abdominal surgery and the surgeons accidentally damage the uterus and cause it to rupture during pregnancy. Now, the manifestations are what we're going to talk about next. First, let's talk about the signs of imminent uterine rupture before the rupture actually happens. So it's going to be extremely painful for the mother. It's going to have a bit, mom can have increased contractions and then can have hyperactive labor. Lastly, it's worth knowing about these bandle rings. These are muscular rings that can be seen outside the abdomen, from the outside, above the belly button, due to the powerful contractions of the upper uterine segment. So to get an idea of what this looks like, here's a diagram of the upper uterine segment. This is the lower uterine segment down here. And above this contraction ring, you're gonna have extremely strong contractions. So this part up here, the upper uterine section, segment, is gonna bulge out. And as it bulges out, if it gets really, really um, tense, if it gets really, really imminent for rupture, you might even see that bulging out on the outside of mom's abdomen. And if that's visible from the skin, from the outside, it's called a bandle ring, and it's a sign of imminent uterine rupture. 
Now let's talk about some signs of actual uterine rupture. Of course, it's still going to be extremely painful. You're going to have fetal distress in this case. The pressure in the uterus has just drastically decreased. Baby might have parts in the abdomen and baby will not um, be happy. You'll probably have bradycardia. You can have decelerations. You can have a sinusoidal pattern on the fetal heart tracing as well. You'll have a sudden pause in contractions. If you suddenly break open the upper uterine segment, then your contractions will uh, slow down. It's, it's going to be a complete catastrophic event. You might have palpable fetal parts, and I apologize for the slightly graphic image here, but it makes sense to see if baby is coming through the uterus that you might feel these fetal parts on the outside of the mother's abdomen. As well. You might also have loss of fetal station. Now fetal station describes how far baby is moving down the cervix and it makes sense that if baby has started to enter the abdomen through a break in the wall of the uterus then that fetal station is gonna is gonna decrease. Baby's gonna be further up the cervix, further up into the uterus if it's now poking through into the abdominal cavity. This of course can cause some serious abdominal bleeding and you might not see that from the vagina, but there can be bleeding into the abdomen of the mother. So this can cause hemodynamic instability for the mother. You might have some light to moderate vaginal bleeding, but of course a lot of the bleeding is going to be into the abdomen, um, so you might not see uh, vaginal bleeding at all. And you can have subdiaphragmatic irritation. So if you have bleeding here and it goes up to the diaphragm, mom can even have pain referred to the shoulder, since blood is an irritant and it can cause pain of the diaphragm. So that's it for uterine rupture. I hope this was helpful and thank you for listening.